Hello everyone, myself Kiran Krakuntla, lecturer, Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Today, in this session, that is session two of unit one, we are dealing about bioelectric potential. So in the previous session, we have discussed about the cell, that is a human body cell. In that session, we understood what is the meaning of a cell. What is the meaning of a cell? That is, cell is a basic building unit of a human body. That means the human body is made by the group of cells. And then we have understood the characteristics of a cell, like its length, diameter, its membrane thickness, okay? So, and the quantity as number of cells present in the human body. Later on, we have understood the, uh, its structure. That is, the cells have a centrally placed nucleus, okay, which will be responsible for the action of that cell. Then we have seen nu uh, nucleoplasm surrounded. Then we have a nucleus membrane. Upon that, we, uh, it has a uh, cytoplasm and it has a nucleus uh, cell membrane. So, and cell membrane separates the cytoplasm with the neighboring cells. So, we have seen this structure of a uh, cells in the previous session. And in this session, we will be understanding the potential generated in the human body. Okay. Because in the previous session, we also seen that the different sources of the uh, human body, there is a biopotentials. In this, we are going to deal one by one the different potentials. And basically, mainly we will be dealing with the potential generated by the human body. Okay, let's begin with this session. So, the bioelectric potential means we know the electric potential. Electric potential uh, means the normally the electrical signal what we will get. But here we are not dealing with the electrical signal, we are dealing with the bioelectric signal. Bioelectric signal means the signal generated by the human body. Okay. The bioelectric potentials are generated at a cellular level and the source of these potentials is ionic in nature. Means these are not in the normal electrical signal, these will be in the form of ionic. Okay. So those will be generated in the cellular level. That means each cell will be generating the potential. Each cell in the, each cell in the human body is a source for bioelectric potential Bioelectric potential are the ionic voltages produced by the coordinate el electrochemical activity of a large group of cells. That means the potential, whatever the, it is generated, it is because of the action and the coordination and electrochemical activity of the group of cells. That means if there is any movement in the human body, that is uh, because of the group of cells. Okay, Due to that coordination, there is uh, some potential generated. That potential we call it as a bioelectric potential. The ionic movement in the body generates the bioelectric current. The measurement and display of these signals helps in understanding the body functions, diagnosis and treatment of various diseases. So it is very important. This ionic movement in the body generating the signal and measuring that signal is very important because if you want to know the status of any organ or any functional attack of the body, we need to get some signals as we use in the electronic field will get some signal to understand the status, okay? Similarly, in the human body also, we'll be taking the signals to understand the status of, status of that section, okay? So it is even helpful to diagnose and treatment of various diseases, okay? Even just I'll give a simple example. When you go for eye testing, they will uh, give a flash of light and then they will check the response, okay? That response will guide them to understand the problem with the eye. Similarly here, we will be taking the signal from the all section of our human body. So this is a chart of mentioning the different bioelectric signals. Okay, And along with that, it will be here we have a signal origin. That means where this signal is generated in the human body, then the frequency of operation and its amplitude and which device is used to sense this signal. Okay, So coming to the first one, it's an electrocardiogram. In short, we call it as an ECG. ECG uh, it's uh, very popular. Many of us already know it. It's a signal from the heart muscles. The heart will be generating the waveforms that we call it as a heart uh, ECG. And it will be ranging from 0.05 to 120 hertz and with amplitude of 0.1 to 5 micro volts. Normally, the skin electrode is used to generate or uh, record the signal of a ECG. Okay. Next, we have one more bioelectric signal that is a electroencephalogram. In short, we call it as a EEG. Uh, it is generated by the neural activity of the brain. The brain will be having the neurons. Okay, That neuron activity will be recorded. That will be called as a EEG. And it has a ranging of frequency from 0.1 to 100 hertz. 
and the amplitude of 2 to 200 microvolt. Normally, it will be using the skin electrode or the needle electrode or the slap electrodes. Next one is the electromyogram. It's a EMG. Myo means muscle. Our body will be hung the muscles. Electromyogram means the signal generated by the muscles. So, uh, in the skin, muscles will be generating this waveform. Any particular muscle, when it is in action, it will generate the signal. That signal is called as the electromyogram. And it's a frequency ranging from 5 to 2000 hertz, 0.1 to 5 microvolt of voltage signal. And we'll be using the needle electrode to gen uh, record this signal. Next one is a electroretinogram. In short, we call it as a ERG. It is a signal recorded from the retina, retina of the eye. Okay. And normally their frequency will be a DC to 20. DC means no frequency, zero, we know that from uh, zero to 20 hertz. And the voltage is 0.5 to 1 microvolt. Normally, contact electrodes are used to record the, the signal. So we have some more uh, bioelectric signal sources like electro kilogram. It's a corneal and retinal potential variation. So we'll deal in depth about it. It is the potential taken from the eyeball, okay, from the cornea to cornea at the back of the eye to the uh, uh, retinal. That potential will be recorded. That signal is called as an electro kilogram. And it is also having the frequency range from DC to 100 hertz. And uh, it's amplitude ranging from 10 to 3,500 microvolts. And normally contact electrodes are used to sense this signal. Next one is a electro gastrogram, EGG. It's not ECG, it's an EGG. So it's pronounced as EGG only, no, don't pronounce it as a egg. Okay, electro gastrogram. It's a peristaltic movement of the gastrointestinal tract. So internally, we have a intestinal um, organs. That movement of it is measured. It's called electro gastrogram. It is having the frequency of 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 hertz. Normally, it has a various different training of amplitude. And normally, surface electrodes are used. Cerebral potential. So it is uh, related to the brain. So in the brain, we have a different section like cerebra, cerebrum, cerebellum, okay, brain stem. So it is the potential from the cerebral. And it is the cerebrum of the brain. The frequency will be 10 to 1 lakh hertz. Okay, and uh, deep needle electrodes are used to measure the cerebral potentials. Okay, you might have observed that the needles will be placing onto the scalp to record the signal. That is its that is the cerebral potentials. So now we have understood the basics of uh, some different types of uh, potential generated. Normally, any cell will be having the two types of potential. One is a resting potential. One more is a action potential. And here now we'll be understanding what is mean by resting potential, what is mean by action potential, okay? So we'll understand some basics of the cell, uh, like what are the fluids around it and all. Then along with that, we'll be learning these two potential. So normally the body fluid, both inside and outside the cell are electrolytic. That means each cell will be surrounded by the fluid. Even it will have inside and outside the cell, it will have some electrolytic material. The charged atoms or ions present in these fluids are sodium, potassium, and chloride. So there are so many fluids uh, around the uh, cell. And in that, fewer charged uh, atoms or ions, what we call, normally those will be sodium, potassium, and chloride. These three are very important. And we'll be taking these things to understand the resting and action potential. As the sodium ions are positive, the extracellular fluid outside the cell becomes a positively charged. So in this, uh, we are dealing over the sodium, potassium, and chloride. Sodium is positively charged. Since it is outside the cell, the uh, extra cell uh, outside the cell, so it is a positively charged. So you can say the cell outside is having the positive charge. But few potassium ions, which are also positive, enter the cell in an effort to balance the electric charge. It means in the um, fluid outside the cell, we have a sodium, potassium, and chloride. Sodium is positively charged uh, as well as the potassium also positively charged. But the sodium cannot enter into the cell because it has a very low permeability to the sodium. But potassium are able to penetrate the uh, cell and enter into the cell, okay, to balance, to maintain the balance, okay. So, so it means outside there is a positive charged cells of a sodium and the potassium which are also positive is entered into the cell. 
to maintain the balance. This causes a higher concentration of a potassium on the inside than on the outside. However, the charge balance cannot be achieved. Means few potassium entered inside to maintain the balance between inside and outside of the cell to maintain the charge. But what happens? It cannot achieve the balance. Okay. The equilibrium is achieved with the voltage developed across the membrane. Negative charge on the inside and positive charge on the outside. This membrane potential is called resting potential of the cell. A cell is resting state is called polarized. Means when this uh, potassium ions entered inside and try to maintain the equilibrium uh, balance state, it cannot achieve, but it will at that condition will generate the equilibrium condition. Means an own state where the voltage is negative inside, positive outside. Means compared to outside the cell, the energy charge will be lesser in the inside because outside it has a more positive sodiums, but inside it has a more positive potassium. So when you compare the outside has a more charge, inside it has a less charge. That means internal of the cell has a negative charge compared to the outside of the cell. Okay. In this condition, we uh, condition is called resting potential of a cell. Even in that condition, the cell is called as a in a polarized state. Okay, the cell is in polarized state means it is in a resting potential. The typical resting potential within the cell is approximately minus 90 millivolt. The, this indicates that internally it has a minus 90 millivolt of the charge compared to the outside. Okay, when you measure the cell during this condition, it will be hung the minus 90 millivolt. So this is the diagram of the resting potential. This is the cell. Okay. So you can observe here, initially all the fluids will be surrounded by the cell, surrounded to the cell and the, it will have a low permeability to the sodium. So they cannot enter, okay. But the potential, uh, potassium are able to enter inside. So it will have a energy here, charge here. It is a sodium has a charge here, but compared to the outside, it has a less charge. So it is a negative compared to the outside. So when you're measuring here, you'll be getting the minus 90 millivolt. That is it's shown as a positive outside and negative inside. So this is all about the resting potential. Okay. So uh, now we understood how, what are the fluids surround inside and outside the cell and when during the normal condition, what is the resting state? So now we will understand the one more potential type that is the action potential. So I told you resting potential means it is in a polarized state. Now it's trying to depolarize it. The cell in the resting state can be depolarized by electric stimulation, chemical stimuli, and mechanical force. That means now it is polarized. If you want to depolarize it, okay, then it is possible by the electrical stimulation. Stimulation means what? The external input. So regarding the input port to another one, even more about depolarize more about. Okay. So electrical signal put to the other one, put to the other one. Either chemical stimuli put to the other one, either mechanically one force put to the other one. When you give this, it will have a depolarization. When the cell get excited, the permeability of the cell membrane to sodium ion increases and it allows some sodium ions to enter. So earlier in the resting potential, the permeability of the cell towards the sodium was low. So it was not allowing. Now we are given some stimulus. So it may be the electrical, chem uh, chemical or mechanical, then its characteristics will change. So cell membrane characteristics change and it allows the sodium ions to enter inside. Okay. The cumulative action leads to avalanche effect in which sodium ions are at higher concentration outside the cell rest to the inside of the cell membrane. So in I think uh, some uh, sodium uh, due to changing characteristics of a membrane, the sodium are started entering inside. Okay. So when it is entering inside, the avalanche effect takes place. That means one will push the other, other will push the another. That means the heavy flow of sodium charges entering inside will take place. Okay. At the same time, the potassium ions, which are already present inside, okay, those will try to move outside, but those will move in the very slow rate. Okay. So sodium are uh, entering inside with a higher speed and the potassium inside is moving out with a slower speed. In that condition, there is a one potential existing. Okay. So due to this imbalance of potassium, uh, potassium ions, the cell has slightly positive potential on inside. This potential is known as an active potential. So now we understood that the sodium, which was outside, now entered inside. 
and the potential which was inside during the resonance state is at more outside. Okay, in this uh, state, the inside will have a more positive compared to the outside because high amount of sodium entered to the cell. So this can uh, the this time the potential what it generated it called as a active potential. The typical active potential within the cell approximately plus twenty millivolt. Now we understood that internally it has more positive compared to the outside. When we measure that cell, it will be hung the plus twenty millivolt. The process of exciting the cell so as to change from the resting state to action state is called depolarization. So uh, normally in the resting state we call the cell is in polarized condition. When we change that state from resting to action, we call it as a depolarization because it is moved from polarizing to the depolarizing. So we call it as a depolarization. So this is the diagram of uh, action potential. You can observe here when some external stim stimulus is given, the sodium Na plus are trying to enter in inside. The aromatic with the inside shown, and the potassium K plus, which are already exist inside the cell, they are moving outside. You can see here with the outside aromatic. So they are moving, but these sodiums are entering with a higher speed, and potassium are moving outside with a low speed. Okay, so. Here, this diagram shows you the potential existing. When it has uh, this moment, internally it will have more positive, and the outside it has a negative, means less compared to the inside. So we, uh, this difference we can observe like this is the positive, and the outside is a negative. When we measure inside the cell, the potential it will be plus twenty millivolt compared to the outside potential. Okay, this is a voltage or potential difference exists between the internal to the Out, uh, ext, out, outer side of the cell. Okay, so it will be on the plus twenty millivolt. So we understood what is mean by potential, bio potential. Okay, and we understood the resting potential and action potential, and even we understood one term called depolarization, changing the state from resting to action potential. Even you may, you may call that the cell changing the Potential from minus ninety millivolt to the plus twenty millivolt. Okay, so this is all about the today's session. We understood the potential of resting as well as uh, active potential polarized to the depolarized condition. Okay, I hope uh, it is clear about the topics. Thank you.